Are you having trouble with your filtration system? Like, is your material condensing too much or not mixing properly? Well, laminated wire mesh panels, also known as ply mesh, just might be your solution. Stick around. Hey there, what's up? My name's Andrew Kotlar, and a high flow rate is usually the goal for filtration systems, right? Well, sometimes it's important to inhibit that flow and spread a gas or liquid over a predetermined area, like for agitation in silos or aiding the movement of a material in fluid tanks. This is where ply mesh comes in, but what exactly is it and how does it work? Here at WS Tyler, we've been finding all sorts of ways to weave wire mesh to our customers' advantage for over 150 years. And ply mesh just might be one of our favorites. So in this video, we'll go over what ply mesh is, how ply mesh works, how ply mesh is used, and the general cost of ply mesh. Ply mesh is a multi-layered woven wire mesh laminate, more often supplied in panels. When manufactured, individual wire cloths are bonded together by a special sintering process, and the end product is a porous medium for fluidization and filtration applications. The goal of ply mesh is to limit the flow of gas or, or liquid being passed through the media. These limited panels can consist of woven wire mesh layers with square openings, a mini mesh filter cloth, or a, a combination of both. Ply mesh has a defined pore size ranging from 5 to 500 microns. The pores are uniform, and unlike powdered metal products, there's no blind holes. Also, the surface of ply mesh is smooth, with uh, flattened knuckles on the outer wire cloth layers, resulting in, uh, in something akin to polished sheet metal. The physical characteristics of the ply mesh, like pore size uh, and flow capacity, can be customized. And because it's made from stainless steel or other related alloys, the material is temperature and corrosion resistant. And ply mesh can be supplied in panels or ready for installation parts, like for uh, uh, candles, cylinders, cones, uh, and aeration pads. But the standard size of a ply mesh sheet is 500 millimeters by 1000 millimeters. And special sizes can typically be available upon request. The purpose of ply mesh is aeration and fluidization. And it accomplishes its restricted flow because it's calendared or flattened so that its openings become smaller. The heavily calendared layers are then bonded together, creating a very complex path for the gas or fluid to flow through. And because of this, gases or fluids will spread across the surface rather than flow through it, uh, allowing for slow, even disbursement as opposed to just outright velocity. Ply mesh aeration pads can be used to fluidize or optimize the flow rate of powdered and pulverized products in silos and bunkers. These goods that are stored in the silos must be easily extracted for further processing. But the powdered material will often compress or densify during the storage and basically become solid, which means gravity alone for extraction or movement is just not possible. So with ply mesh aeration pads, they'll ensure the ability of the material to flow. These aeration pads and elements are easily installed in silos, making the retrofit cost-effective, especially when considering the efficiency that they'll provide for the processing facility. Also, ply mesh is a proven separating element and a highly efficient discharging aid in silos and air conveying troughs, especially when high temperatures are considered. And there are tons of other applications for ply mesh, including flow regulators and water pipes, drinking water, filtration, sound attenuation for air outlets, uh, filter inserts for air aspirating holes, water separators for fuel, and uh, hydraulic filtration for aviation and aerospace. It completely depends on the specifications of the mesh. There's a number of factors that determine final cost, like a uh, Basic sheets of material will cost less than a fabricated filter, for example. But there are some cost drivers, uh, like the amount of calendaring, sintering, and, and bonding required, uh, the post-production processing required, extra components added in post-production, or simply the fact that the material is produced in low volumes. But I will say, the thinner ply mesh made into simpler parts will not cost as much as thicker ply mesh made into more complicated parts. Typically, we aren't producing these types of items in large scale, like 100 pieces or less per order, so it must be kept in mind that the fabrication is labor-intensive. While this component is relatively high cost, the value that it offers in aeration and fluidization applications is immense. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn even more about woven wire mesh or our many products, 
we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click that second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name's Andrew Kotlar and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.